For the past two weeks, we have been talking about the relevance of the Hanoff Auto Switch and how the mechanical board is a bit of a bottleneck in the BMS installation process. After today's video, you will know exactly what I've been building up to for the past two weeks as we step into what does distributed controls mean and how does that free up our commissioning time. So keep watching. When you have a handoff auto switch on a mech board, it means that your BMS controller, the digital output, those pair of wires, they need to wire out into this mech board through the handoff auto switch in the auto position, through a bunch of interlocks, normally fire and smoke, and yeah, we'll, we'll get to that. And it energizes a small relay, which then sends a start signal to energize the variable speed drive. When you remove the handoff auto switch, there is no requirement for the variable speed drive to get its start-stop signal from the mechanical board. And that allows us to take our controller out of the mech board and distribute it onto the air hand unit. And that's where this term comes from, distributed controls. We take these 10 controllers that are in the mechanical board or next to it, and we distribute them across the plant room onto each piece of mechanical equipment. So as you walk down the plant room, past these air hand units, you will see a small box with a controller on each of the air hand units. Those two chillers down there, a small box, chiller one, chiller two controllers on the wall next to the chillers. We've taken these controllers out of the mech board from down there somewhere, and we've distributed them across all of our mechanical equipment. And that helps us because we no longer need to wait for mechanical to finish their work, their install to 80%, so that we've then got this route back towards the mech board, where we get all these 100 cables from all of our air handling units and chillers and boilers, and we collect them all up, and that we funnel them down that last piece towards the mech board. We do not need to do that anymore, because once we remove the handoff auto switch and the run of fault lamp, there's no need for us to go there anymore, or for us to be there anymore. That mech board is just going to be providing three-phase power supplies from circuit breakers, three-phase circuit breakers, out to each variable speed drive. So what happens now is, when that AHU gets delivered three months early, we can walk up with our little box with our controller on, screw it onto the side of the air handling unit, and start pre-wiring all of our inputs and outputs on that air handling unit. And we can finish them off actually in the terminals of the controller, because the controller's not there anymore, it's over here now. Now, if you collaborate nicely with the mechanical contractor um, during the design phase, or actually ideally, you know, in the months before you even win the job, that they know what you're gonna do, they can install the variable speed drive onto the air handling unit as soon as it gets put there. And they can put two meters of pipe work and heating cooling valves. They can put two meters of duct work on the front of the air handling unit, two meters of duct work on the top of the air handling unit. That means that in that completely empty plant room where there's no mech board and there's no mechanical contractors all over the place, you can actually wire from your controller into the variable speed drive, the start stop si signal, status and fault, and the zero to 10 volt speed signal. You can wire onto those heating cooling valves completely. The outer air damper, the return damper, the spill damper, get that pre-wired. Panel and bag filters, differential pressure switch or transmitter pre-wired into the controller's terminals. On that short piece of duct in the front there, supply temperature, humidity. Uh, on the return duct, temperature, humidity, CO2, VOC. So you can almost completely install that air handling unit months in advance of when you normally would have. Now, even if the mechanical contractor doesn't really want to be proactive and help you by getting the dampers on, and getting the valves there, and getting the speed drives on, and some ductwork, and that's going to happen sometimes, you can at least, worst case scenario, you can follow them right behind them through their installation process. So as soon as the valve's gone, you wire them. As soon as the damper's gone, you wire them. As soon as they start their ductwork to come off, you wire your sensors. So that means that you will finish 
exactly when they finish. And in fact, likely you'll finish a few weeks before them because they've got to get all their ductwork and pipe work down the plant room across to the risers and chillers and boilers and, and all over the place. You don't need to go there anymore. You're just staying here locally on your air handling unit. So you'll probably finish your install a few weeks before them. Now, I guess for the last three weeks, we've been building up to this point now where we have started our install two months early and we've either finished very early or at least finished 60 to 80 percent of our sensors are pre-wired early how does that help us with commissioning in next week's video we're going to run through how you can power up that one bms controller or that one ahu address the controller download the program and commission all your inputs and outputs stroke your dampers stroke your valves get everything ready before the mech board is even there before there's power in the plant room at all, before the site even has power. So keep an eye out for that one, and I will see you next week. Thank you for watching.